Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. Today I wanted to show you how to use QuickNode. QuickNode is the fastest and easiest way to run your own Ethereum node. And as a DAP developer, you can get started running your own Ethereum node in a flash without the hassle of downloading all of the chain data from the main Ethereum blockchain. And you don't even have to worry about keeping your node in sync locally. So I'm going to walk you through how you can use QuickNode to build a blockchain explorer. And this will give you an idea of how you can use QuickNode to develop decentralized applications. Let's take a look at what we will be building in this tutorial. This will be a blockchain explorer that lists the most recent transactions on the main Ethereum blockchain. This will be similar to something like Etherscan, where we can see the most recent transactions. And we'll be able to see data like uh, the block number, the transaction hash, and the timestamp. Let's go ahead and build our blockchain explorer. I'm going to put a link to the project code down below so that you can just watch the video if you want to. Or you can also use this code as a reference point in case you get stuck. First, we'll start off with an empty index.html file. And we're going to need a few dependencies. The first dependency that we need is the bootstrap templating framework. This is going to just give us some nice looking UI elements without having to write any CSS or JavaScript ourselves. You can find how to get started with bootstrap with this documentation here. First, I'm going to take this style sheet and put it in my document. I'll paste this into the head tag like this. Next, I'll paste in all of the required JavaScript files just before the closing body tag. The next dependency is the web three library. This is a JavaScript library that's going to allow us to connect our blockchain explorer DAP to our quick node and read data from the blockchain. I've pulled the Minify version of Web3 into my project inside of a JS folder. And I will go ahead and include that below our script tags for Bootstrap. And this will pull Web3 into our client side project. Next, I'll paste in some markup so that we have a place to render our blockchain data. I've just created a, you know, a header and a table that gives us a place to put all of our data. And what we'll do is append all of the rows in this table with the blockchain data. And while we're here, I'll also give this some basic styling like this. And I'll also give it a title. And also notice that I've pulled in a logo to our project that can be found in the images directory. So let's take a look at what we have so far. This is our basic layout where we have a table that we want to fill in with all the data from the blockchain. So what we'll do is use Web3 and QuickNote to pull that information in and we will render out some rows here. To do this, we'll open a script tag to give us a place to write some JavaScript code. First, we want to set up Web3. And remember, Web3 is going to be the library that will allow us to connect to our quick node and read the data from the blockchain. We can set up Web3 like this. We need to create a Web3 HTTP provider, and we'll instantiate a new Web3 instance with that provider. In order to do this, we need to get the HTTP provider URL for our quick node. Once you've signed up for quick node, you can find the HTTP provider URL for your node down at the bottom with developer tools. You can expand this section and find your provider URL right here. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste that URL to this provider variable. I'm going to see if I have everything set up correctly. I'll do this by logging the current block number to the console. I'll go back to our web page with the console open and hit refresh. And you can see the current block here. Next, I'm going to save this value that we just logged to a variable like this. And I'm going to use this variable as a reference point to list all the blocks in the table. What I'm going to do is list the latest 10 blocks. And what we'll do is take this block number and subtract 10 and loop through every value in that list in order to list out the latest 10 blocks to our table. First, I'm going to create a for loop that's going to run to the 10th most recent block. 
and we'll take all the values in this list and subtract them from the latest block number in order to get the 10 most recent blocks. So when we loop through this, we can actually get the block with web3.eth.getBlock, and we can get access to the most recent blocks by subtracting uh, this I value from the latest block that we stored here. I'm going to set some of the block data to variables so that we can render these out on the table in a nice and clean fashion. First, I'm going to get the block number, and next I'll get the block hash, and last, I'll get the block timestamp. Lastly, I'm going to take all that data that we just read and append a table row uh, for each block where we'll list the number, the hash, and the timestamp that we just stored here. All right, so that's it. That should be all of the data that we need in order to list all of our blockchain data on our blockchain explorer. Let's save this and then refresh our page. All right, there we go. We've got all of the 10 most recent blocks from the main Ethereum blockchain. This is the block number, this is the block hash, and this is the block timestamp. So congratulations, you have just built a decentralized application with a quick node. Now I'll show you how you can sign up for quick node so that you can get that provider URL and start building your project. I'll walk you through the sign up steps. We'll click the sign up button. You can enter your email address and your password and click next. Now we can select the location of our node. I'm going to select US East because that's what's closest to me. And we can select the uh, Ethereum blockchain that we'd like to connect to. You got some options here. You can choose the main Ethereum network or a test network or some Ethereum classic networks. So I'm going to choose the main Ethereum network. And we can also uh, select a node provider. This is Parity or Geth. I'm going to choose Geth. Click next. Next, you can choose how long you'd like for your quick node to run. I'm going to choose one month. This will be 0.1 ETH, and I'll finalize this. Lastly, we can pay for our quick node with Ether, and this is the address that we can uh, send Ether to in order to pay for our node. If you don't have any Ether in your wallet, you can uh, you know, purchase some with a website like Coinbase. I'm going to send some Ether with MetaMask like this. I'll paste in the address that was listed here on the website, and I'll add the amount, which is 0 0.1. And I'll click Next, and I'll pay for the transaction here. Submit. All right, our transaction was sent. Now that we've sent Ether for our quick node, we want to revisit this page to see if our transaction was confirmed. So I can uh, paste the URL here for uh, later use, or you could bookmark this value. Once payment has been received for your node, you will get a confirmation email with a link to the status of your node. Once we visit this link, we can see the status of our node is activating, and we can see all of the other details that we filled out when we registered. Once your quick node is activated, you will receive a confirmation email, and you'll see the status change to ready. And there you go, your quick node is ready to go. If you want to find all of the developer information for your node, you can go to the bottom and expand the developer tools to find the HTTP provider link that we used in this tutorial. All right, that's it guys. If you want to find the project code for this tutorial, you can check out the link below. And be sure to check out QuickNode for the fastest and easiest way to run your own Ethereum node. And also be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, DAP University, so that you can see more videos about how to build decentralized applications on the Ethereum blockchain.